Panther people, what up? All right, the Panthers, they added nine players. They let one gigantic face of the franchise go. Are we in the right direction? Did they actually get better or did we get mediocre? Let's go. All right, you're watching Panthers, supposed to Phil Perkins. I am back, slightly more tanned. I didn't come back from Florida, came back from Hilton Head, South Carolina. I love that place. Don't tell everybody about it because I don't want it to get more popular, more expensive. Um, but yeah, I'm back. Back in the studio. Feels like forever. A lot happened. I hope uh, I thank you guys for uh, following that journey. A bunch of YouTube shorts, a bunch of TikToks. If you follow me on TikTok, uh, at Panthers Post. Uh, if you follow me, obviously, here. Uh, thank you for watching the YouTube shorts. We had that live, re live-ish reaction of the Brian Burns trade to the New York Giants. Still can't believe it happened. But here's the part about traveling. It's a bit of an issue. Uh, we drove to Charlotte, which is great. Uh, went to Noda, checked out some vintage stores, and got this bad boy for $50 US, $75 Canadian, just saying. Uh, this is absolutely beautiful. I love it. Uh, I couldn't find anywhere else, so I copped it up. Uh, also, shout out to hats uh, from the 1990s. Uh, they're still too small for my head. I don't know how small people's heads were back then. Either way. But then we flew from Charlotte to Toronto, and then we forgot once we're already in the terminal, I forgot my iPad. So what do I do on my iPad normally when it comes to Panthers Post? It's where I edit my videos. And so that's not happening right now. Avis did find it. They're bringing it back. So for the next couple episodes, no edits, just straight talking. You're going to see some ums and ahs, but this is the way it is. This is the true, authentic me on Panthers Post. So let's talk about it right now. We can't gloss over Brian Burns being a New York Giant. Obviously, I'm doing it again. I did it live when it happened. Um, but yeah, it's it's unfortunate because I thought that, you know, if there's a way with with Brant Tillis, who's worth every bit that whatever they're paying him, to try to keep him, try to keep him happy, try to keep him paid, and then at least you have a veteran, face of the franchise, blue chip elite player on that team. Now, you, now luckily, they also have a Derek Brown who can hold down the fort literally on the defensive line. But I thought, I hoped that there was a way, there's a world that we can live in that Brian Burns is still a Panther. And unfortunately, he's not. And is he going to be a winner uh, with the New York Giants? I sure hope so. They need to find their quarterback. He kind of finds himself in a similar situation he's, he's been with the Panthers because they have Daniel Jones, who's not necessarily their guy. They got Drew Locke, who, I don't know, he, he could be their Sam Darnold. Honestly, they, he could be going back in time. He's getting paid a lot more money. But he could be going back in time where they're constantly searching for that franchise quarterback, and we will see. Maybe they trade out to get a Jaden Daniels or a J.J. McCarthy or somebody. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But hopefully he is successful. The, uh, the NFC East is a tough spot. The Washington Commanders, they're bolstering up their defense with a ton of former Panthers and Jeremy Chin and Frankie Lubo and company. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. But at the same time, the Panthers needed more picks. And I've said this a million times before. His timeline career-wise is a different place than what the Panthers are right now. They are clearly a rebuilding team, and they have finally uh, announced that, and they're finally operating like a team that is not one or two players away, which is why they need more draft picks. They did get that second second round pick. They got the fifth round pick, next year's pick as well. Didn't get the two first rounders, but it is what it is. And with that second round pick, that second second round pick, it does allow more flexibility for the Panthers on what they were doing in free agency. So free agency will always determine what happens in the draft. And in free agency, the Panthers adding nine players and literally the same day that brian burns is left out i said this in the video it shows that the panthers are more concerned about bryce young right now and the offense than their defense and brian burns they're they're more worried and focused maybe word is not the right word but more focused on the development of bryce young they already know brian burns is fine he's an elite player like bryce young is struggling and they need to help him out and so Brian Burns is an edge player. And what did they do on the first day of free agency when he was officially traded to the New York Giants? They added depth and starting elite capability on the inside with Robert Hunt, a massive mountain of a man. If you saw the video from the Carolina Panthers social team, he makes Taylor Moulton look like not a mountain, but like a hill. And then you got Damian Lewis from Dave Canales' old stomping grounds, the Seattle Seahawks. So they are formulating a secure interior wall and it's not just for short quarterbacks and everyone's comparing this to what the new orleans saints did with uh, drew Brees, who was a shorter quarterback you know probably if we're honest sub six foot and then bryce young who's definitely sub six feet you know you got to build the middle of the field got to build the middle of the offensive line that's not just for short quarterbacks if you if you are a move the sticks podcast uh day oneer they interviewed luke keekley years ago years ago and he talked about you know Edges is great. You know, you always got to secure the left and right side edges of the offensive line. But he said the most direct path 
to the quarterback. It doesn't matter if they're 6'5 or they're 5'11. It's straight down the middle. If you can get through a center, if you have a leaky center and you got leaky guards, or in the Panthers' case, a leaky guard and center, because Bradley Bozeman just couldn't keep up with the scheme and the guards was interchangeable because guys were always getting injured. That is the closest, quickest route to the quarterback. It doesn't matter how tall they are. So if you can fortify the middle of the offensive line, he even said if he had a rookie quarterback at his disposal and he was a GM, the first thing he would do is get elite centers and guards because that's also the you know the, the best way to get some mid-range shots as well, right in the middle of the field, right down the middle. And so it helps on offense to just build the middle of the offensive line. And they did that with two gigantic guys, over 650 pounds combined, you know, over $200 million almost combined in terms of wages that they're going to be paying these guys. And then they're getting Austin Corbett reportedly moving into center. There was nothing wrong with Austin Corbett at guard besides the fact that he was injured. But him at center, you got a Super Bowl winning guard who is now playing center. He's a smart guy. Uh, you know, he could be the face of the offensive line right now. And then you have two behemoths in the middle of the field as well who's going to give Bryce Young some time. We hear from Dave Canales. It's about 2.7 seconds. He wants the ball out of Bryce's hands. Boom, boom. And you got Taylor Moulton and Ike Aquano in a power running scheme because as Dave Canales has said in his opening press conference, he's going to be bullish about the run, which is why I'm interested in why we haven't made too many moves in the running back position. Yes, Chuba Hubbard made strides. Miles Sanders can only get better. I have no hopes there. Raheem Blackshear, he's going to be coming back. I, I, he, if, if you're a Panthers fan, a real one, you know Raheem Blackshear is the truth at times. But I'm still looking for a bruising type running back. Maybe they find one in the draft as an undrafted free agent because nobody's drafting running backs anymore. But maybe they find someone, uh, whether it's someone actually good enough to be drafted to be a power back. Because when we talk about all those other guys, they're just, they're just that's, that's not their style. That's not their style. So I'd be interested to see if they get a power back there. Uh, they got a wide receiver who actually gets separation, Deontay Johnson with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the thing I like about him, sure, everyone's already talked about the separation. He's got pretty decent speed as well. But the fact that he's kind of a douche on the sidelines to, to quarterbacks, to his teammates, guess what the douche also starts with a D? Guess what else starts with a D? Dog. And that's what the Panthers want. They want a dog. They want a guy who's angry. They want a guy who feels slighted. He's on a prove-it deal with the Panthers. He wants to get that big money deal. I see him being an improvement. Now, I'm not going to get too excited. We all got too excited last year. I got excited about DJ Chark being the speed guy. He was not the speed guy. I was, I was excited about LaVisca Chanel being Debo 2.0. That's not. We don't even talk about it. We don't know where he's – where is he playing right now? I don't know. So, Deontay Johnson, is he the wide receiver one? No. I think he's wide receiver – uh, you have to say, just because of his production last year, Adam Thielen, in the moment, is wide receiver 1A. Dante Johnson is wide receiver 1B. And then you got, uh, I think, uh, well, obviously, Jonathan Mingo. Hopefully, he's in the lab right now doing his thing. I know he is. Amir Smith-Marset, he has been brought back as well. Fine. Maybe he feels more comfortable now that this team has chosen him and paid him and committed to him, that he feels more confident and he can continue to uh, pr uh, produce the way he did with the team last year when you know he was kind of just basically trying out. And so... Hopefully that helps and uh, in terms of production on the field. Um, but we'll see what they add. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. So then on the defensive side, we're kind of, you know, we lost an A++ blue chip player and filling it in with, you know, maybe B, B minus C, maybe a B plus players. But their edge is that they have a connection with our defensive coordinator, Ejiro Evero, whether it's Ashawn Robinson, defensive tackle, uh, Josie Jewell, a linebacker out of uh, you know, Denver Broncos. You know, these guys all have experience with Jiro Evero. So what they might lack in, you know, league-wide ranking in terms of talent, they are leading in terms of their experience and their comfort with the system. Because we saw in the offensive line last year uh, with the system change and how that completely puts guys out of whack. Akia Kwanu, who had a huge sophomore slump, Bradley Bozeman, who regressed. And it wasn't because they're bad players? No, because Bradley Bozeman is now potentially the starting center with the Los Angeles Chargers. So these guys aren't bad players. It's just a bad fit. And so if you bring in guys who might not be close to a Brian Burns in terms of talent, but you're bringing them in, but they know what to do with the defense that they are in, it might make up for that. It might make up for that. And so you got them. You got DJ Wanham. Uh, who, again, a massive mountain of a man. Does he feel like a kind of a stopgap uh, defensive end? Maybe. Uh, uh, Clayvon Chazon, he's a depth guy. No way he's going to be a starter. Uh, I do see DJ Wanda being the starting uh, defensive end for the Panthers. And then eventually, or maybe right off the bat, uh, talk about those two second-round picks. 
I see a rookie defensive end starting for the Panthers on week one, unless TJ Johnson somehow went into the lab and just watched the film, got more fit, faster, whatever. Got he real he got a talking to because they chose to keep him. Maybe they trade him, but at this moment in time, they have not traded him. They they're keeping him. Maybe that kind of like Amir Smith Marset, who feels some confidence behind him in terms of a backing from the executives on the team. Maybe DJ Johnson feels the same way. He's like, hey. We fired the whole coaching staff. We kept the defensive uh, coordinator who believes in you. Show us what you got. Uh, we're also going to draft defensive end and try to give you some competition. So I totally see DJ Wanham being, you know, a serviceable defensive end there. Uh, and I that coupled with book ended with a rookie defensive end, maybe with a 33rd overall pick, maybe with a 39th overall pick, they get a defensive end. I see Chop Robinson coming around from Penn State a bunch. Um, and so that's a name that you maybe want to look out for as well. They also have the defensive end from Missouri. I think Darius Robinson is his name. I haven't really looked too deep into that class. I probably should. I thought we were going all wide receiver here, but now we got that second, second round pick. A lot of options right now, a little bit of flexibility. Uh, and so did the defense get better? Um, Talent-wise, no, collectively. Uh, do they all equal up to the powers of a Brian Burns? No, but with the loss of also uh, Frankie Louvu, Jeremy Chin, who, again, a scheme guy. Didn't scheme well with the Ajero Everell defense, but we know that he does have talent. But losing the uh, Brian Burns, Frankie Louvu, uh, Jeremy Chin, Dante Jackson, say what you want. You had four guys who had pretty good skill. Dante Jackson, we all forget, was a second-round pick out of LSU. And so does this replacement of them kind of negate the loss? No. Will I think the, the comfortability with Ajero Everell's defense help out a little bit? Yes, maybe, you know, maybe they're, they're better as a sum of their parts. And, you know, maybe you get, you get, you know, maybe this Josie Jewel guy is, is absolute mauler. And, and, you know, he had his best season ever as a linebacker in the Denver Broncos scheme that led to Jerry Everett getting a job with the Carolina Panthers, the offensive coordinator, gave him head coaching job uh, opportunities. So maybe, maybe, maybe he's a Frankie Louvu replacement light. Uh, I could also see the Panthers getting into getting into the the linebacker position in the draft at some point. Uh, the cat out of North Carolina State. Shout out to you guys making your way to the tournament, winning the ACC. Yay for you guys! Um, maybe add to it because, like I said, free agency helps dictate what happens in the draft. And so, with these moves, let's say it stops here. What happens in the draft? But before we talk about that, there's two wide receivers out there, mind you. And I just talked about you're probably yelling at the screen now because. Uh, Chase Young chose to sign with the New Orleans Saints. That's fine. Jadavion Clowney, uh, he is a Rock Hill guy. He is synonymous for taking his time to figure out where he wants to play. I think he wants to win a championship. Pa Carolina Panthers aren't going to win a championship right now. Um, but does he end up being, you know, you got a, you got a Jadavion Clowney who, who, pretty, who played pretty darn well with the Baltimore Ravens. And a DJ Wanham, defensive end, one-two punch right there. That could be good for a year. That could be good for a year. I, you could say that that is a little bit more talent than what one Brian Burns gets you. You got to get two guys. And also, Jamie Clowney, only 31 years old. He's not an old man. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But it hasn't happened yet. Same thing with the wide receiver position. We got two wide receivers there who are making a little bit of noise and making their rounds and they're, they're making their visits right now. And that's Mike Williams, from the, who got let go from Los Angeles Chargers. You know, Jim Harbaugh going out there and just scorched earth and building it in his image mike williams big wide receiver clemson product the only problem i got your best ability is your availability let me read you off in his seven-year career in the nfl the injuries that this man has sustained so this hernia number one the back is a crazy thing right now i played golf once in hilton head once and my hips are all shot neck fracture okay that's still the back that's the spine that is a complicated situation you're dealing with. Right? That can flare up at any moment. Knee bruise, not bad. AC joint in your shoulder, that's okay. Muscle spasms is a due to the back, potentially. Hamstring issues, what do they say? Oh, this ball fell. Does he drop the ball? No. Uh, hamstring issues, what do they say about hamstring issues? Only fast guys get hamstring issues. Ankle, two times, two times. And then after that, an ACL that ended the season last year. So. The website that I looked at said there is an 80% chance that this man is going to be injured again next year. What, what's the point? What's the point bringing a guy in and you pay him and he is a LaVishka Chenault clone? That he's going to come in there, have all this promise, have this skill set, and then he's not available. What's the point? And you're paying him. And he's taking reps 
from guys like Jonathan Mingo and a potential rookie uh, wide receiver. What's the point? And then Michael Gallup. I always thought this guy was pretty clutch. I thought he is a contested catcher. I think he's a strong wide receiver. Uh, if he wants to come in at a vet minimum, I think that could work out. I think, and, and his injury history, I don't think is, is as extensive as Mike Williams. I would take a shot at Mike Gallup if he wants to uh, offer up the Panthers that opportunity. Um, and I also don't, I think he'd be a good locker room guy. I don't think he's a true number one wide receiver. Uh, I think that then would still lend a hand to the rookie wide receivers. I think the Panthers are in, undoubtedly going to be drafting. Uh, Deontay Johnson could still do his thing. Adam Thielen could still do his thing. And then Mike Gallup could just be another piece in the puzzle. But even if they pick up a Michael Gallup, I still want the Panthers to draft a wide receiver with one of those two second round picks. If they go, because of the additions that they made on offense and defense, if they find its best player available at 33, you can get, you know, 33 is still, you know, to some people, an extension of the first round. If you can get a first round type talent, on the defensive offensive line, whether if they feel committed about Austin Corbett being the center, then so be it. He's not an old man. He could play center. Great. I don't think there's a point drafting a depth piece at center with a 33rd overall pick. Um, but if you find a uh, a defensive end, an elite level defensive end who had first round grades, but because there was a let's say a run on wide receivers, uh, run on defensive tackles or something like that, tight ends, who knows? Who knows that corners that this person falls to the second round. And who knows? Who knows who it is? It, there's always surprise in the NFL draft that they jump on that with a 33rd overall pick because they think, oh, wow, the league is going to figure it out. You know, we got the first pick, but if this guy somehow bypasses us, everyone's going to be laughing because, you know, a smarter team is going to pick this person up and we're going to regret it because there's a depth, extreme depth in the wide receiver position to the points where some draft analysts think that you could pick one up in the third round. That's a starting level wide receiver. So... If they can get an elite level, first round talent uh, level defensive end in the 33rd overall pick, do it. Um, and then at the 39th overall pick, if you can get, if someone like a Xavier Leggett is still around, if a Keon Coleman, who is that bigger body wide receiver who you can almost compare to Mike Williams, who would come at a far cheaper price and less injury prone, younger. Um, I know Mike Williams is still sub 30, but still, you get a younger, larger, uh, didn't run fast in the 40, but clocked at the fastest time per like kilometer per hour. I think he ran 20 kilometers per hour in the gauntlet drill in the combine. So game speed, the guy has it. And he's got height, weight, all that stuff, and contested catch dude. So Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett, Ricky Purcell. Uh, I don't think Lab McConkey will last until 39. Maybe he does. Who knows? But those dudes, I think you can grab one there. Later on in the draft, whether it's you know fifth round, sixth round, I think we have two fifth round picks now. Brendan Rice, the friggin' son of Jerry Rice from USC. I think he's an option there. Um, there's there's a lot of depth in this wide receiver crew. Uh, Malachi Corley later on in the draft. He, he's a guy who has that dog mentality when he plays and the way he runs routes. Um, but again, Troy Franklin in the 39th overall pick. We know. So we got we got these big body wide receivers, Adam Thielen, Jonathan Mingo. Uh, Deontay Johnson is a separator, kind of like Adam Thielen if he was a little bit younger. Um, kind of like a Lab McConkey right now. And so you got that. You, you have Amir Smith Marset, who's like that gimmicky jet sweep guy. You don't have that tall burner, which is why I could almost see a Troy Franklin uh, being a guy uh, who, can, who can garner some attention with a 39th overall pick. Uh, Xavier Leggett, still a fast dude. He's about like 6'3, I think, 6'1, 6'3, over 200 pounds. And, you know, he, he could be like uh, our version of uh of what's his name brown aj brown for the philadelphia eagles he could be our guy he could be a version of that and i'll take that but with every aj brown uh you got uh a, a Devonte smith so right now our Devonte smith is near smith marset does he have that long speed i don't know um so again that's where troy franklin comes in uh that's where well that's been troy franklin that's about it. Uh, I can see that in terms of downfield speed. And then a, a Lad McConkey who played outside for Georgia uh, plenty of times. He can maybe get separation as well down the field. And so that is the way I see that the, the draft, at least in the second round, could play out. Uh, Joe Person was on WFNZ recently, and he said, you know, don't count out corner. You know, if that Nate Wiggins guy out of Clemson is still there with the 33rd overall pick, Panthers can't really rely on Dane Jackson and on the op like, be on the opposing side of J.C. Horn uh, Dane Jackson has been a career backup uh, in the NFL. Maybe you bring in a Nate Wiggins who's got that crazy 4-2 speed, and then you can bring him in, draft him 33rd overall. In the 39th pick, you go wide receiver as well. Um, 
I see that working out for the Panthers. So do I think the Panthers at a whole are better? I think they at least have a goal in mind and a plan for the quarterback that they have. It seems like last year, Frank Reich and company were building a good team that's almost like a, a formulaic standard good team. You got a good team and you just need a formidable, prototypical size quarterback, you know, 6'2 plus, um, that's been in the league for a couple of years. Andy Dalton. If Andy Dalton was a starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, the system that they had in place uh, with Frank Reich, primarily in shotgun, didn't run as much, and then you have the offensive skilled players at that disposal, maybe that works. But you had Bryce Young, and you had a guy who was undersized, can't fight that. Um, is a guy who, a brilliant coming in, brilliant mind, football mind, but maybe just too much in his head in terms of the coaching staff. And so it seemed like it wasn't built for Bryce Young to succeed. It might be built for a guy like, yeah, Andy Dalton to succeed, Justin Herbert to succeed, Philip Rivers to succeed, but Brian Bryce Young, maybe not. So it seems like this offense is finally going to be, and it thankfully just took a year. Uh, at least it's built to help Bryce succeed as a player. And, you know, we'll see. And this year and next year, if things go awry, obviously it's it's the first year of this rebuild, a true rebuild with this team. If they win three games, four games, five games, two games again, is an indictment on Bryce instead of the whole team, you know, collectively? A little bit, a little bit more than last year. And then the year after that, if things get rough, maybe a, bit, a little bit more on Bryce. But did the team get better? I think the team is better for Bryce. Are they better overall in terms of if you take all the talent and you compare to the talent last year? No, but last year's team won two games. So if this actually has, this is geared towards their strengths, then they are a better team. They solidified the interior offensive line. That did not happen last year. Hopefully everybody stays healthy. They have a separator. Maybe they draft another one. Um, the defense, a little bit more aligned with what the head coach, uh, the deep, uh, uh, defensive coordinator wants. Could work better. And they want to commit to the one. They're saying this now. It, with that, I feel like they do draft a, a power running back. You know, get somebody out of Wisconsin. I don't know. They always seem to be pretty good runners. So I think... They are better in terms of the plan that they have and the construction built around the players and their strengths. I think that it, I think it's built better for Bryce. It's built better for Icky because you got a head coach who wants to run the ball no matter what. And it's better for Bryce because you got one more separator with more speed in Deontay Johnson. I think they can add more, whether it's in the draft in terms of rookie wide receiver who's got some speed, long speed. They're still not done making trades. You know, maybe the Michael Gallup shows up on the team. You can get another tight end uh, that can catch. That could be a physical presence, a nice safety blanket, although I do still believe. I still believe in Tommy Tremble. Uh, in terms of defense, maybe you replace Brian Burns with a collective addition of all these players who know how to play and succeed in the Jero Ebro defense. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to do a mock draft coming up uh, based on the additions via free agency and with these extra picks in the draft and see what you guys think about that. But let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, bell, all that stuff. Let me know. Did the Panthers get better or are they just kind of the same? See you guys.